the vitamin D connection in here. And they're seeing that vitamin D now can be your modulator for how much calcium you get. <laughs> well, we're really in trouble in Michigan. <laughs> Six months out of the year, we're losing a lot of our bone because we don't have enough vitamin D. And we really don't know what that vitamin D level has to be at to push the calcium in the bone instead of take it out. So one of the kindest is they're studying is how to build that matrix of bone. As you see in the background here, this is actually bone highly magnified, and this is an osteoporotic bone. Should be much thicker with much smaller holes. So what they're saying is, is that if you can build the matrix, the calcium, the vitamin D, the vitamin K, the boron, all those things that are known to build bone can actually help build that bone strength and ability. It has so, something to, to, to stand on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is that, I mean, you don't have much to stand on on these little, think of chalk. You push chalk against the chalkboard and a lot of times the long stick will break. That's exactly what's going on with the longer bones of our body. Yeah. It's, um, it's, really, it's really interesting because last year in uh, University of Groningen, that's uh, in my home country, they published, um, uh, and I thought of this immediately as this information was presented, they found that with serotonin reuptake inhibitors, in other words, those that block serotonin, which are antidepressants, uh, Prozac is a real common one, but there's many of them, uh, uh, they found that it causes irritable bowel syndrome. And that's very important because 80% of our serotonin levels are in our bowel. It's used for contraction. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter, if it, I should have qualified that. So we always think of serotonin as our happy neurotransmitter but it's used for contraction of your bowel, mainly, 80% of it. So because we're blocking it here, it's also blocking it here, causing irritable bowel syndrome without, within nine months. Irritable bowel syndrome, we know, causes depression. So now all of a sudden we're aggravating depression. But what's even worse, the serotonin levels being altered affects bone formation, which we didn't know about until just now, because serotonin also stimulates bone formation through osteoblastic activity. Yeah? Osteoblast is the cells that build bone. So you see, all of a sudden, you have all these unwanted effects from blocking something. And that's why the one pill, one symptom deal is no longer working. As our knowledge is exploding about how everything is so interconnected, we're seeing how much harm we are doing with the pharmaceuticals. It doesn't work anymore, folks, and that's why your health premium might be 8000 bucks a year. Because we're supporting the pharmaceutical industry, we're not supporting health. That's what we are doing. We're not thinking of it this way. So, very powerful. This is new technology that we're, gonna, that we're going to really scramble to put to use immediately so that we can get this very important piece of the missing puzzle back. We should be able to easily beat any pharmaceutical that's on the market as far as bone building. Nor would you want to use that anyway, because how does that work? It works by blocking bone breakdown. Yeah? You think, well, that's a good thing. It's not. Those drugs block bone breakdown, and bone building continues on in. What's happening is the old bone that's supposed to be flushed out so you can keep on pushing in new bone to keep your bones young, it's not happening. So you're just accumulating more and more old bone. Chop, essentially. So you've got dense bones now. Looks great, Dr. says, you bet you gained another 3% this year. Awesome. Let's do a bone strength test on that. And you'll find you're much more fragile, you're chalk-like, and you're much more prone to hip fractures. Just read the studies. Are there studies beyond one year for bone fracture on these drugs? No, not at all. Why? It's because they're worse. You have a higher incidence of hip fracture with patients on medications versus those that are doing nothing. And side effects are terrible. Side effects are terrible. 23%. Uh, uh, follow through after just one year. That means almost 70% dropped out. Yeah, for a good reason, gastrointestinal upset. So, The PDR, okay. in, in reference to that, the physician's death reference, which is the big reference of all the medications that we have, looking back through that, you'll find inhibitors, you'll find blockers, and that is the majority, actually isn't that all that's in there? Is there anything that builds? All of those 
in there, the greatest majority, are going to be inhibitors or blockers. Why do we try to inhibit and block everything? The body doesn't inhibit or block unless it needs to wall off with white blood cells. And it's not meant to do that for long periods of time. And that's what we've been trying to do with our bodies for a long time. So ultimately with bone, again, does that make calcium not important? Of course, it's still the building block. Vitamin D, critical. But now we've got the last missing component. We feel it's the last missing component it's called serotonin. And, and identifying the vitamin derived serotonin as a hormone inhibiting bone formation is in a lipoprotein receptor. Well, I don't need to go into that. But it broadens our understanding of what's going on. Now we feel that we have the last piece of the puzzle that we never knew about. Now, this is very connected to some other things, and I'm going to pull a quick uh, thing that I just found out. Oh, got it right here in my hand. <laughs> um, obese kids found to have arteries of 45 year olds, just got published. And this is uh, uh, obese kids is one third of our na nation at this point. Uh, we, we expect that uh, one third of our nation will be diabetic uh, within about 20 years. Uh, so this is why this has become a, a, a crisis. Um, and uh, this obesity is due to what? It's basically lack of activity perhaps. It's multifactorial and we're going to talk about that in a little bit because that's another part of the chronic disease is obesity. But one of them is pop, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. There's pop. Well, I don't have to go there, but three, four pops a day is not uncommon for a lot of these kids. It does create obesity. And all this refined sugar is creating a huge inflammatory response, making their arteries look like a 45-year-old by the time they're eight years old. Okay, and this is very common. But what's also happening, this high sugar level is causing an insulin rise. That's why we're seeing this upcoming epidemic. And the high insulin rise is very inflammatory and this inflammation hits the bones and the bones become very weakened by this inflammation. So inflammation is also another factor in osteoporosis. We expect an epidemic of osteoporosis in 35 year olds in today's kids. So again in about 10 to 20 years we're expecting to see osteoporosis in 35 year olds. It's, it will happen because it's already being measured today. So it's very sad, and that's why this new research, I think, is so important. Now we should move on to diet, because I think that segues nicely. Um, so as we talking about obese children and insulin resistance, and metabolic syndromes, another word for it, syndrome X, whatever you want to call it, it all means the same thing. It means lack of signaling to your insulin receptors, not allowing the glucose to rush into the cell, to give us the energy that we need to go through whatever that cell function is, whether it's just for ATV, for energy, is it balance, working on bringing out hormones, immune function. The nice thing about this slide is there's, it talks about the triad of metabolic syndrome. And the triad is really abdominal obesity, elevated blood pressure, and pro-inflammatory state. The other things just tend to show up after that. Insulin resistance was there to bring on the abdominal obesity. The elevated blood pressure was brought on by the prothrombic state, but we don't notice it until the elevated blood pressure comes out. The pro-inflammatory state comes on with apogenic dyslipidemia. This is um, high cholesterol imbalanced cholesterol numbers, so if you have a high LDL, high triglycerides, that is what's showing up. So metabolic syndrome is unfortunately probably one of the leading health problems that we're dealing with in the United States. Let's face it, we're an overweight nation, we're the heaviest nation, and we're the sickest. Let's work on it. So dealing with this, you have to look at everything that can be affected by metabolic syndrome. Remember how we talk about in functional medicine there's a web. Everything is interconnected. Well, with metabolic syndrome, it can create all of these symptoms that go on here. Cognitive decline is one of the things that you see a lot. Somebody who has metabolic syndrome will start to see blood, blood sugar changes throughout the day. This tends to be a classic case is we start to get tired around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We want to take that mid-afternoon nap, but we really need to keep going. That's one of the things.